on one of my listings um, and the guy lives in Georgia uh, who's moving up to Charleston and so I was able to get a, uh, a referral agent down in Georgia and I got him set up up here with a loan officer so that was good for me that was a good thing amazing good for you Camille very awesome yes 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 so it's Friday which means it's all not it's all scripts Friday yeah and if you have a particular conversation that you want to role play, raise your digital hand. If you have an objection that you would like a script for, raise your digital hand. And I will just start calling on each of you who have uh, that little digital hand raised. And until I see digital hands in the air, I'm just gonna talk. Okay, so last week we focused heavy on prospecting. So let's pick up from there and talk about a couple of objections that we can hear in making those prospecting calls and responses for those objections. Then from there, let's go to quickly the goal of a face-to-face -face appointment and the scripts we use in order to determine if there's opportunity and set them up for future success. By then, there may be a few digital hands in the air and we'll go to that. And if not, then I'm gonna to go to the listing table and we're gonna talk about scripts to use in order to get the listing. All right, so call in a for sale by owner. I've had lots of offers. That's one of the responses you're going to get. Cool. Have you accepted? Have you accepted an offer, or do you have an offer that you're going to accept? If your property were to go under contract, is it sold? If you accept one of those offers, is your property closed? Have you asked for a pre-approval, or? I see your hand, Anna. I'll come to you in just a second. Do you have a pre-approval, or have you? Are the is the buyer paying cash? Are the buyers paying cash? Cool. Have they provided you with proof of funds? Does the contract call for repairs? What are the repairs that are in the contract, or is it an as-is contract? How many days do they have for inspection? And do they have the right to cancel the contract because of the inspection? Does the buyer have a property that they need to sell? If they're going to be getting a loan, can they get a loan without selling their property? If they have a property that needs to be sold, is the property currently under contract? If they have a property that needs to be sold, is the property listed with a real estate agent or is it being sold by owner? I just keep going with these questions, guys. And these are harm's way questions that are caused, that are created to cause the seller to think, to question the possibility that maybe their home isn't sold. Now, lastly, I'm going to ask them, when is the proper, when are you, what's your closing date? This is to someone who tells me they have a contract. So when are you scheduled to close? Camille, cool. You're scheduled to close December 21st. Awesome. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to continue to stay in touch with you just in case something were to happen to that contract. Thank you. Most real estate agents are going to stop calling, guys. Now, they've got a 33% chance of getting to the closing table. That's according to the National Association of Realtors, right? They've got a 33% chance of getting to the listing table. So why would you stop calling? As a matter of fact, I still want to come see your home in case I were able to bring you an offer. I mean, worst case scenario, I bring you a backup offer that would take first place in case the offer that you currently have were to fall out. Okay, Anna, talk to me. Um, for, uh, not for door knocking. Yeah, anything. It's open. Anything you want to talk about, guys. So I went out door knocking uh, a few days ago. And I introduced myself to the neighborhood 
And I also, because it's Thanksgiving, um, I asked them if they wanted uh, Popeyes or pumpkin pies. And most of the people were actually very nice and they responded. And um, well, I have, now I have to deliver some apple pies and pumpkin pies, but I might have some people that want to sell not right now, but in you know a couple of months maybe. And I wanted to hear you um, talk about scripting for Donut. Yeah, I think that's great. Congratulations, by the way. And uh, door knocking, offering pumpkin pies at apple pies. What an awesome idea. You know, just out of curiosity, how many total pies are you going to be delivering from door knocking? Well, so far, it's only seven. Okay. Because uh, not everybody wanted pies, but everybody was really grateful that I was out there offering it. Yeah, I think it's great. I love it. Yeah, so Anna, I knock on your door, you answer the door, correct? I'm, I'm gonna immediately take enough steps back so that you feel safe, especially in today's environment. And good morning, my name is John Dietz. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams Realty. Hi, John, how are you? Perfect, so I'm pausing and giving Anna an opportunity to introduce herself, right? That's the reason I pause. And if she does it, I'm simply gonna ask, may I ask your name? Okay. Anna. Hi, Anna. Nice to meet you. So the reason I stopped by today is I'm a real estate agent who specializes in this market and this neighborhood is one of the neighborhoods that I focus on. And there are lots of buyers who are looking for great homes like yours and there's nothing for sale. So I'm asking everyone in the neighborhood if you know of anybody that's looking to sell their home. Um, not a, as of now, I don't know anyone. Okay, well, thank you for taking a moment but to think about that. A, do you have a business card? Yeah, of course, and I'll and yeah, and I'll give Anna a business card and a one-page flyer that just bullet points my resume. That's off script. Okay, so she responded, "I don't know of anybody looking to sell right now." I appreciate you taking a moment to think about that. Before I go. I like to keep my friends and family members updated on the real estate market. That means I send them really interesting information on the market once a month. And I call every three or four months just to check in. Would it be okay if I added you to that group? Um, I really don't like to give out my information. Okay. But I'll so, give you a anyway in your information. Okay. So guys, in that situation, you're just going to thank the homeowner and you're gonna go knock on the next door. Okay. Yeah, Anna, that's it. I mean, you, this person, it's a, it's a complete cold call. Uh, is that an objection to overcome? I don't know, maybe. But the way I see that is I'm just going to go knock on the next door because all I'm looking for, remember, is one person every day to say yes to that question. Okay. Now, if I'm, not, if I'm knocking on doors and I talk to 20 people in a neighborhood, and at the end of the day, I've got five who said yes to that question. Now I have five people that I've moved from a habit met to a met in my database. Now they're on an eight by eight in order to create top of mind. So I'm winning the positioning battle. And then I'm moving them to a 36 touch in order to create a long-term nurture for the relationship that over time will lead to direct sales to my database and referrals. So to the seven who said yes to getting to your offer, my challenge to you would be to get their contact information, put them in command, launch an eight by eight, and then a 36. I got, two, I got two contacts information. There you go. Now to the other five people who said yes to a pie, go back and get their contact information. Okay. I mean, don't, don't make it a requirement, but you know, I believe that they should give you their, their contact information, right? Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, you got it. Ryan. Hey, how are you doing? Yes, sir. Um, I'm great. Good. So um, there's that one person that I met in September, but he told me that he signed a, the listing contract with an agent, but like, I don't want to keep following up with him because he said he listed it, but like whenever I check on the email, it's never on there. So, um, how would you proceed? So you've got a seller who told you 
that they've listed the property with a realtor. However, the property is not in the MLS. Two months later, no. Say that one more time. I said two months later, it's still not on the MLS. Okay. Um, personally, now I don't want to get in. I don't want to get any of you in trouble, right? And Ryan happens to be in my office. So I'll take the heat for this if I give him advice that gets him in trouble, right? I'm going to keep calling. He was an, it was an expired listing, Ryan? It's a for sale by owner. For sale by owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep calling until that property is in the MLS. Personally, I'm going to keep calling. Now, have you been to the property to see the home yet? Yes, I have. Okay, so you're in follow-up. Good for you. And follow-up is simply, hey, Ryan, John Dietz, following up his promise, just checking in to see how things are going. Now, tell me you listed with a, with a realtor, right? Oh, um, I listed with a realtor. Okay. You know, I think he told me that on the last, on our, in our last conversation. By the way, I know he did, but I don't want to directly challenge him. <laughs> So you told me that on the last conversation, it's confrontational. Remember, words matter. So Ryan, I think I could be wrong, by the way. Great script, right? Yes. You're not always right, guys. And the way how to win friends and influence people, Dale Carnegie, is don't always be right. So I could be wrong, but I think I remember you sharing with me on our last conversation that you had listed the property. And before calling you today, I actually looked in the MLS and I don't see it. Well, um, oh, you need a response. Um, so I'm playing, well, guys, I'm playing offense. Did you see how Ryan responded? He's on the defense. Now he has to defend his position that he listed the property with, with a realtor. He's playing defense now. I'm playing offense. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Carol. Carol said it could be in another MLS used by a buy owner discount company. That's a possibility. And you may, and, and let's see how this goes, though, guys. Ryan, respond to that question. I don't see it in the MLS. Yes, um, I already signed it. You should see it in a few um, days. Oh, okay. Well, I'll keep an eye out for it. Right. And if I don't see it in the MLS in maybe a week or two, I'll call you again. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I hear it is in the MLS and I'm not seeing it, this is for Carol, then I'm simply going to say, hey, you know what? I'd love to make this property available for buyers that I'm working with. If you could email me a copy of the listing, that would be awesome. John or maybe uh, have you been getting broker showings? There you go, Eddie. Great response. So it's in the MLS. That's awesome. So you have real estate agents reaching out to you to see the property then. Good one. Love you, Eddie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good stuff. All right, guys, let's move to the listing table. I don't see any more digital hands up in the air. So we're just going to move to the listing table. Oh, I promise to talk about what to say when you get to the house. So remember when you visit the home, this is for, the, this is for a preview. This is not for a listing appointment. When you get to the house, the purpose of the appointment is to create a relationship and build a foundation to follow up from. That's it. The purpose of a phone call is to get the appointment. That's it. We don't, re we don't judge appointments away because someone has unrealistic goals. We don't judge appointments away because someone says they're never going to hire a realtor. They already have somebody that they would hire because all of that is just noise. We're going. The purpose of the appointment is to build a foundation in order to create a relationship in order to follow up. And that's it. And you have three questions that you need to answer from the moment you confirm the appointment to the moment you leave their house. And those three questions are questions they're asking about you, which are, can I trust you? Do you care about me? Do you know what you're doing? So before I go on the appointment, if my appointment is at four o'clock, I'm going to call Dominic in the morning. I'm simply going to say, hey, Dominic, John Dietz. Remember, phone calls always make them like you're talking to a friend. This is not a sales call. I'm not going to go, good morning, Dominic. This is John Dietz with Keller Williams Realty. And the reason for my call today is to confirm our appointment for 4 p.m. this afternoon. No, <laughs> Dominic's going to go, never mind. Don't come. <laughs> 
So, hey, Dominic, John Dietz with Keller Williams Realty. Just call him to confirm our appointment for later today at 4 p.m. And Dominic says, yes. And my response to that is, cool, see you at 4. Now I am going to arrive on time. I'm going to dress for success. I'm going to make a great impression at the front door. When Dominic opens the door, hi, Dominic, John Dietz. Nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be here. The moment you walk in the front door, wow, great house. And I'd love for you to take me on a tour. Before we, before we do that though, would you like me to take off my shoes? Now, as we tour your home, I'm gonna ask lots of questions and I'm gonna take lots of notes and I'm showing them my notebook because this is the information that I'm gonna use to help you sell your home. Now, as we're touring the home, I'm asking questions and I'm taking notes and I like his house, super important. Be enthusiastic. Now, before I leave, hey, Dominic, before I leave today, is it okay if I ask you a couple questions? This is the exit conversation. Dominic says, yes, cool. First question is, you know, in my experience, most homeowners who are selling their home by owner have a game plan for how long they're going to sell by owner before they hire a professional like me. Is it okay if I ask you what your game plan is? If it's an expired listing, so Dominic, before I leave today, is it okay if I ask you a couple questions? Yes, cool. You know, in my experience, most homeowners who have a property that didn't sell that should have, like yours, have a game plan for how long before they put their home back on the MLS with a realtor like me. Is it okay if I ask you what your game plan is? Okay, second question. You know, back to a for sale by owner. In my experience, most for sale by owners are selling their home by owner in order to save on the fee. Is that the reason you're selling by owner? Yes, of course, that makes sense. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be understood. Everybody wants to be right. So let them know, that's a great decision. I agree. And when I scheduled the appointment, you shared with me that if I were to bring you a buyer, you would pay me 3%, correct? Yes. So the difference between selling your home by owner and working with a professional like me is just 3%, not 6%. I'm just going to let that hang in the air. I'm dropping a bomb. Now, whether I close for a listing appointment or not, is gonna depend on if I see frustration. Frustration means opportunity. And if I hear frustration, I see frustration, I'm simply gonna say, hey, Eddie, you know, if I'm being too aggressive, please forgive me. However, if you were to hire a professional like me, you would want to hire an aggressive agent, wouldn't you? And it sounds like you might be thinking it's time to hire a professional. So if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money in less time, would you be interested in seeing how I could do that? Yep. Now, if he says yes, what do I have? A listing presentation. A listing, a listing appointment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if they respond with, I don't want to list my home, my response to that is cool. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not trying to list your home. I'm simply asking you that if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money in less time, would you be interested in seeing how I could do that? Are you curious? Now, if they persist with, I don't want to list my home, I could respond with, let's make a deal, Angel. I will never ask you to list your home, never. You will never hear me say, would you like to list your home? Now, based on that, are you at least curious what I would do to sell your home for more money and less time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to keep that promise, guys, because I'm not going to ask. She's going to ask. She's going to say, okay, what would you do to sell my home? Now, I'm going to remind her <laughs> that I promise never to ask her to list her home. And I'm going to ask for permission to have a listing conversation. And she's going to say, yeah, 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 John, that's fine. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, we're at the listing table. Always start with, it's 824, guys, so we're almost to wrap here. Always start with, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Before I get started, is it okay if I share my mission statement with you? 
My mission is to meet your goals and exceed your expectations. Now, because of that mission, whenever I meet with a potential seller, by the way, this works in a buyer consultation, just change it to buyer. <laughs> whenever I meet with a potential seller, one of three things typically happens. One of those three things will happen today. Either number one, they hire me, which is awesome. The second thing that occasionally happens is they may not hire me and quite honestly, that's not so awesome. And the third thing that happens every so often is I may choose not to represent them in the sale of their home. Pause. I'm pausing because I wanna hear, why would you turn down my listing? By the way, if I don't care about you, remember the three questions you have to answer. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Do you know what you're doing? If I don't care about you, would I be willing to list your home for any reason at any price just to get a sign in the front yard? The answer is yes, I would. If I tell you that your home is gonna sell for more than I know it will, do you, can you trust me? No but because my mission is to meet your goals and exceed your expectations. And because I begin the conversation with one of three things are gonna to happen today, I am immediately conveying, I care about you, you can trust me, and I know what I'm doing. Now, let's fast forward to the end of the, list, uh, to the, end of the listing presentation. Angel, so at the beginning of our conversation today, I asked you that if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money and less time, if you would hire me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So just out of curiosity, on a scale of one to 10, with one being you don't like anything I said, can't wait for me to leave. By the, by the way, guys, the laugh, the smile, all of it is part of a script and it's all practiced and rehearsed. You're an actor and you're on stage. So on a scale of one to 10, one being you don't like anything I said, you can't wait for me to leave. And 10 being I'm the right agent for the job. Now I'm gonna get serious. It's also a great embedded command. I'm the right agent for the job. Where are we? Eight. Okay, eight's a good number. What would it take to make us a 10? Um, well, I really, I, I need, I'm watching my bottom line. So I really need for you to drop your commission. I'm looking for an agent to drop their commission. Okay, cool. So my fee is 6%. Just for the purpose of this conversation, don't report me to NAR or anything like that. Get me in trouble. It's just a conversation. So my fee is 6%, Angel. If I were willing to list your home for 5%, would you hire me today? Yes. Cool. Can I share with you why that concerns me? Sure. Yeah. You see, whenever someone asks me if I'm willing to negotiate my commission or they're asking me to drop my fee, I'm also hearing them ask how good of a negotiator I am. Right? Okay. Yeah. The good news for you, Angel, is I'm a really good negotiator. You see, if I were willing to give away my money that quickly that I use to support my family, how quickly would I give away your money when we have an offer on your home? Well, I mean, I guess you would, but I make the decision on what offer I take. Well, that is true. However, if you were to hire, let's say another agent, because clearly you've spoken with someone or you're going to talk with someone who's willing to list your home at any fee just to get the listing, right? Yes. And, and, and we would call them a limited service discount agent. Totally throwing them under the bus, guys, intentionally. By the way, we would call that agent a limited service discount agent. Now let's pretend for a moment I'm that agent. Okay. And we're listing your home at $500,000. You're going to tell me what your bottom line is. In, in other words, you're going to say, I won't take anything below 485. Okay. Get me 485 and I'm selling my house. 
Now, let's fast forward 30 days. And I get an offer for $470,000. And I'm that limited service discount agent that gave away my money easily, which means I'm showing I'm not a very good negotiator. I'm also willing to give away my money, so I'm willing to give away your money. And I'm talking to the other agent. I'm like, wow, 470, that's awesome because I know she'll take 485. No. Now, do you want to hire that agent? No, you should never tell them what I'm going to take. Well, what if you could get 495? What if you hired the right agent for the job and the right agent got you 495 versus 485? But let's say the right agent is me and my fee is 6% versus that limited discount agent who got you 485 and their fee is 5%. Who are you making more money with? Well, I would definitely make more money with you, but how are you going to get me 10000 more than the other agent? Yeah, because I'm a great negotiator. Okay. And who you hire matters. And how about we do this? Let's make a deal. When we have an offer, if I need to give up money in order to make the deal work, I will, because I'm a deal maker, not a deal breaker. Let's say it's the same buyer and they come in with 475 and the highest they go is 490. And you tell me, John, my bottom line was 495, not selling it for less than 495. And I offer to give up money at that point in order to make the deal work. Would that work for you? Yes, it would. Yeah. In the meantime, in that same time period of time, if I could bring you a full price offer of $500,000, are you going to ask me to reduce my fee? No. You ready to get started? Yes, that was good. Okay. All right, guys, it is 8.31. John, a as, a proof, as a so proof, you can- uh, Let's go with Eddie first, guys. Go as ahead. As a proof, uh, Angel can also take some listings she sold close to the asking price. Yeah, yeah. To re reinforce that she's a good agent and good negotiator. Yeah, great job, Eddie, you're on fire today. So let me, let me show you a list of properties that I've sold in the last, 12 months. And what I want to focus on is list price to sell price ratio. And as you can see, I'm getting 98% of the list price on average. Now, I also pulled a list of properties that are being sold by flat fee realtors. Those are discount agents as well. And as you can see from the list, the average list price to sell price ratio is 90%. They're pretty smart guys. You don't have to say anything else. Just stop and let that hang in the air. All right, ahas. John, I did what you said about, I'm a great negotiator. The seller wanted me to go to 5% and it wasn't as awesome as yours. I was listening to you though. <laughs> and we kept it at 6%. That's the, yes. one I, that's the one I got the 44 offers on. And we're at 50,000 over asking. <laughs> just out of curiosity, Valerie, every so often I have to self-promote just a little bit. What's the list price on the property? Um, 165. Okay, cool. And 1% would be $1,700, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that one day that you were on that call, the return was $1,700. What's your Venmo handle? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What is that? Venmo, pay you. <laughs> oh, see, well, there you go. That's, that shows you who I am. I've never charged anybody for any of this. Are you kidding me? Just a joke. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, I, if, I, if I charge people, I guess I would have known what that is. <laughs> no, I don't want any money. That's, no, not, no, why, I'm that's not why I'm, that's not why I'm doing this. It's, yeah. it's um, such valuable information. It's yeah. wonderful. Thank you. All right, who's next? Give me some ahas, guys. I'm, I'm going to tell you how is my technique. Mm -hmm. Always I go at the listing presentation, of course, with agreement. Mm -hmm. And after show him the stats, the everything of the job that I prepare. Um, 
I began to explain the agreement. And when I go at the commissions, I said, always, I charge, Keller Williams charge 6% at everyone, but I'm going to charge only five if I found out the buyer. And immediately the person said, wow, yes, it's okay. It's okay for me. You know, I don't get any opportunity to say anything about the six. There you go. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's always work and always, of course, uh, I have to work with another agent, but this is another issue. Great job, Adriana. Great um, job. Another thing that we can mention is like the cancellation fee for um, in the contract is zero dollars. So um, because I know it's zero dollars, I know you can cancel it at any time. So I'll do everything that I can to sell your home, not just to list it. So they like to hear that too. Good job, Ryan. Proud of you. I am. Uh, Valerie, a couple of great suggestions for you in the chat. Get a video testimonial from the seller. Great marketing opportunity. I agree with that, by the way. So uh, if I'm right, you haven't closed on that property yet. Uh, go ahead and if you're at the closing with the seller at the same time, great opportunity to shoot a quick video. So time to get to work. What's work? Work is 20 conversations, not 19, not 18, not 17 conversations, because when you settle for 17 conversations, because you're close enough, the 18th conversation could have been a million dollar listing that you didn't get and you never knew it because you didn't make the call. The purpose of the call is to make care calls, not sale calls. Lead with gratitude always. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate you. Lead with gratitude and bring contribution to every single call. Bring value to every single call. Every day and every conversation, focus on either getting an appointment, getting a referral, or adding somebody to your database. Set standards. Live up to those standards. 20 conversations is a standard. One face-to-face -face appointment every single day is a standard. Adding one person to your database every single day is a standard. Mm -hmm. Find somebody today that's thinking of selling their home, whether it's three months from now, six months from now, or a year from now, doesn't matter because you're going to need listings a year from now. You're looking for opportunity, period. Not, for, not opportunity today. You're looking for opportunity. Once you enter those 250 people into your pipeline, you're following up with them for ever because you reject rejection and no is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. There is absolutely nothing that would cause you to stop calling them other than they sold their home. They listed with another real estate agent or you're dead. You can stop calling. Other than that, keep calling and success is absolutely guaranteed. Make it a great day. Thank you, John. Yeah, Thank Carol, you. I will get back to my journal entry on Monday. I decided that this was, this was more important today. This, was, this is Friday. I don't want to leave you guys over the weekend wondering so you're gonna have to wait till Monday. If you wanna hear the rest of the story. What's our schedule for next week? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We will not have calls on Thursday or Friday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Awesome. Yes. Thank you, John. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Have a nice weekend. Thank you.